Hey, good morning. Um, my name is Xuefang Zhao. I'm a postdoc research fellow at Tchaikovsky Lab. Today, I'd like to talk about the uh, genome sequencing and variant discovery effort that were previously done and currently ongoing in the Southern Genomes Project, as well as the Human Genome Structural Variation Consortium. Let me start with a brief introduction about genomic variants in human genome, which when we talk about, I guess the, the most people will think about the replacement of a single nucleotide in human genome as genomic variation. However, in reality, the genomic var variation is more complex than that, that except for the single nucleotide variants, we also have we also have a group of very small insertions and deletions that are between two and fifty bases, which we call indels and we call SNPs and indels, uh, SMVs and indels together as short variants. Except for those cl classes, there's also a whole spectrum of large structural variations that are rearrangements of genomic variants that are fifty base or above. There's a complete there, there is diverse subclasses of structural variation, such as the copy number variation that includes deletions that represents the depletion of a, a piece of DNA from the genome, or duplication, with, which is a du there's an extra copy of DNA pieces in the genome, as well as multi-allelic CMVs that represents the fact that for a piece of the DNA sequences, different people in the population would carry different copy numbers from zero to like a very big N number. Except for CMVs, there are other S types of SVs, including insertions and mobile element insertions, inversions, and more complex interchromosome translocations and complex SVs, which usually refers to the, rare, the modest sub rearrangement that involves two or more pieces of DNAs. So to detect those wide spectrum of genomic variants in the human genome, the Southern Genomes Project has been collecting samples from diverse populations around the world and they sequence them with different sequencing technologies. So in the pilot study, which were published 11 years ago, a hundred, there are 179 samples collected and sequenced with low coverage whole genome sequences. In addition, they also selected two trails. So trails are the families that consist of a father genome, a mother genome, and a child genome. So they selected two trails from their two different populations and sequence them with whole genome sequencing to, to very high coverage. In addition, they also collected 697 samples for exome sequences. From this data, uh, the, our colleagues in Southern Genomes were able to define over 15 million SMVs, 1 million indels, and more than 20,000 SVs from, this, from all this data. At the same time, led by Dr. Mose et al. They also look into uh, the subclasses of structural variants from this data, where except for 22,000 deletions, they also defined uh, 6,000 other variant type structural variants, including the duplications, mobile element insertions, and the non-reference insertions. I highlighted a couple points that I think are valuable and interesting from this pilot study, that those data were able to estimate about 250 to 300 loss of function variants per genome, with additional 50 to 100 variants that were previously indicated in inherited disorders. They estimated the uh, de novo rate of the de novo mutation rate in human genome at 10 to the minus 8 per base pair per generation. In addition, they identified a, a remarkable reduction of genomic variation rate in the neighborhood of genes due to their close linkage to the, to the coding regions. For the SV study, SVs detected by whole genome sequences are of higher resolution than the previous studies that were done with array-based based data. In addition, they found around 50, more than 15,000 SVs in their cost set 
or novel, which said they were not previously found by other studies. And they found an enrichment of rare SVs and small SVs in the novel set, which further strengthens the importance of sequencing data for structural variance discovery. In addition, they were also able to map 15,000 SVs at nucleotide resolution, which were not really possible with array data. Mm -hmm. Uh, two years later, uh, later the Southern Genomes expanded uh, their sample size to include a Southern 92 samples and sequence them with low coverage whole genome sequences, distant coverage axon sequences, and SNPs array. From this data, they detected 38 million SMVs, 1.4 million indels, and 14 Southern large deletions. This data served as a valuable resource for the community because first the samples were collected from a diverse diverse population that that from four different superpopulations. And they were able to apply orthogonal technology such as the PECBA long reads to estimate the false discovery rates in the data, which were quite low, that they estimated 1.8%, around 5%, and 2.1% for SMV in thousand large deletions. In addition, they were able to increase the proportion of the genome that were accessible by short rate sequences from 85% in the PALA study to 94% in this, the current phase one, the phase one study. They, they further extended, the Southern Genomes further extended their sample size to 25, to more than 2,500 and uh, sequenced them with uh, low, low coverage whole genome sequence, axon sequences and microarray. The phase three data and the results were published back in 2015, where they find more than 84 million SMVs, 3.6 million indels. In addition, led by Dr. Sunman et al., they all, the, the Southern Genomes colleagues also took a close into the structural variation in this data, where they were able to define almost 70,000 Struct, uh, structural variance sites across the 2,500 samples. And they also estimated that uh, each person were, supposed, were expected to carry around 4,400 alternative alleles that's different from the current reference genome. Um, I highlighted some uh, uh, points from this studies here. So I think those, the phase three data are very valuable. First, because their sample were collected from 26 populations across the five major continental groups. For all the genomic variants they detected, they were able to phase them into high quality haplotypes. As expected, the ancestry populations carry more variant sites than the other populations as shown in the panel B and C in the figure I put on the right. And they also estimate that each individual genome are supposed to carry around 150 to 180 protein truncating variants, 10 to 12,000 coding interruptive variants, and around 50,000 variant sites that overlaps with known regulatory elements. For the SV study, they were able to uh, characterize each subtype of the SV, such as the CMVs, the inversions, the mobile element insertions, and also the mitochondrial insertions into the genome. And they also provided estimated alternative alleles for each subtype of them. And then it comes to the current study that uh, we have been done in collaboration with the New York Genome Center, where we collected 3,202 uh, 3, samples from the Southern Genomes um, and uh, sequenced them to a high coverage. A couple highlights in this study, which were posted on the archive this February. Uh, so if you're interested, go, go check that out. So for in this study, we built our sample size upon the 2500 uh, phase three samples, and we included an additional 698 related family members into the sample site. So in the final 
uh, set, we actually have 602 complete trails, which would allow us to do QC and uh, other interesting studies on those data. To detect genomic variants, we apply the GTK best practice pipeline to detect SMVs and indels. We also explored the structural variation through an ensemble approach that combined the GATK SV pipeline, which were developed and adapted for the NOMAD SV study, the SV tools pipeline, which were used to detect the structural variants in the CCDG, and also the absence method, which was a specially designed method to detect novel insertions. From this data, we were able to detect they find over 100 million SMVs, over 14 million indels, and uh, over 170,000 SVs from uh, uh, the 3,000 samples. Now we estimate a low FDR for all the variant types. I want to highlight the, uh, the, import, the, the important feature about Southern Genome Samples that uh, this, the the samples were collected from different populations and the sample were relatively evenly distributed across each sub, uh, subpopulation as I showed in the plot on the right. Right, so the Southern Genomes has put a great effort for to detect genomic variants in the human genome. Well, I also want to mention that uh, uh, there are other contemporary studies that uh, are dedicated to define the landscape of genomic variants in human genome. For example, the NOMAD, which is conducted by teams here at Broad, uh, they were able to collect uh, variants from more than 15,000 whole genome sequences and more than 125,000 whole axon sequences. In the phase two study that were published last May on Nature, they reported uh, uh, more two times more genomic variants than our Southern Genome study. And in a contemporary structural variation study that were led by Dr. Collins and Brand from the Tukoski lab, they reported an average of 7,500 structural variants per genome, which is very comparable to the uh, SV call set that we, we generated for the Southern Genomes high coverage data. So except for short grid whole genome sequences, the Human Genome Structural Variation Consortium has also been dedicated to generate PacBio long read sequences for a subset of the Southern Genome samples. For example, in the in Chison et al. that were published two years ago, uh, the, uh, the consortium selected three trails from uh, the Southern Genomes and uh, sequenced them with different uh, technologies. And they, they reported a, a little bit less than 25,000 SVs per genome from the long reads. Well, we also applied short reads to detect SVs and we, where we found 10 to 11,000 SVs per genome. Uh, and another more recent study published this February reported about the similar uh, about the same number of genomic variants from long reads and short reads. So looking from this data, it looks like long read were able to detect two times more structural variation than short read whole genome sequences, which is a significant increase in the uh, in genomic uh, SV detection. I will talk about the unique advantages of long reads and short reads in variant discovery in later part of this uh, presentation. With that, I'd like to take questions before I go to the next session. Great, yes, there was a question um, from Paulo Coro who was asking what the rationale was for sequencing father, mother, and child in the Thousand Genomes Project. For including trails in the data, I think first it could serve as a good, uh, good, good data set to estimate the quality of, of the call set. For example, uh, there are studies that estimate uh, each individual should carry less than one de novo structural variation. So if you find any structural variants uniquely in the children's genome, but not in the parents' genome, then you, you you would know it's uh, it might it might it's very possible this is a de novo event, and uh, 
also including the trail information would uh, help us estimate after you uh, remove the false positives, of course, would help us estimate, for example, that it's the de novo rate, the transmission rate in the human genome, if that makes sense. That's great, thank you. Is there any, uh, okay, I, I guess that's the only question. So I'll keep, I'll keep going and talk more about our work in the CAR and the Southern Genome Study that covered, uh, that, uh, that, that included 3,202 samples uh, with uh, high coverage whole genome sequences. Uh, as I mentioned before, we detected SMVs and indels using the GTK best practice pipeline. Where in panel A, I'm showing the uh, uh, distribution of samples across different uh, superpopulations and uh, the the numbers in the slash slashes shows the number of the new samples in this study by comparison to the phase three, which is also relatively evenly distributed. We at, we analyzed the uh, genomic variants by their types, and we found that more than ten percent of the SMVs and more than twenty percent of the indels were novel were novel to this study. We also analyzed uh, the genomic, uh, the small genomic variants or indels, uh, SMVs and indels by their ancestry and at, consistent with other studies, we found more structure, uh, more small variants in the African population than others as shown in panel C. The yellow bars represent the uh, African population. That's all I expected. Uh, we also analyzed the um, uh, the we also characterized the variant site, and we find that around six point five percent of the sites are actually multi-allelic. Uh, and the FDR, as I mentioned before, for the SMVs and the indels were relatively low. That uh, we have the 03 percent false discovery rate for SMVs and a 1% FDR for indels. To understand the, the, the gain from the high coverage sequences versus the low coverage Southern Genome Phase 3 data, we did a direct comparison by taking out to the 2,500 sample match samples between the two studies. And we did a direct comparison between them. So we first, uh, in panel, uh, we first compared the number of variants that were detected in each study split by their allele frequency. So we found that the significant uh, gain of sensitivity in the high coverage data were in the relatively rare SMVs and indels that are under 1%. We later split the SMVs and indels based on the level of confidence that we can detect and genotype them in the in the from the reference genome, and we split them into three different groups as either uh, easy, medium, hard, and hard. So easy are the genomic regions where we can detect uh, genomic variants with high confidence. Hard are the genomic regions that we can, uh, we cannot really make uh, high confidence calls and medium are the regions that are like in between of these two. Um, I want to point out that the hard region consists around 8% of the reference genome, which is very close to the proportion that uh, the highly repetitive uh, genomic regions in the genome. So we first checked the recall rate of the new data by comparison to phase three, where we find a very good recall rate in the easy and medium accessible regions, but we found the significant decreased recall rate for variants that are in the hard genomic regions. We estimated the correlation between the allele frequency of variants in the two studies, and uh, similarly, we find, sorry, Similarly, we find a high correlation 
for easy and medium regions, and we find a hard, uh, sorry, we find a low correlation for the hard regions. Uh, what we observed for both studies were that uh, uh, more, more genomic variants were detected in the, in the African population than others. And when detecting the false discovery rate for different, uh, for the two studies, we found that the high coverage data consistently uh, report a more, much lower false discovery rate than the phase ray. Except uh, then it comes to the structural variation cause set where as uh, we, we were able to integrate the GTK SV, SV2s, and absence methods to an ensemble cost set. In this cost set, we detected a total of 170,202 SV sites across the 3,000 samples. We examined the distribution of SV sizes. And it actually fits our expectation. As you can see, we observed the clear peaks for ALU, SVA, and L1. Those are different uh, mobile element types, and we expect uh, a, a peak for each of them uh, as labeled in panel B here. In addition, we observed that this, the size of the structural variation are inversely correlated to the fraction of SVs, which is totally expected. We also examined the allele frequency of different SV types where we find their distributions are very close to each other. If we check the average structural variance count per genome, we find that an average of over a, a little bit over 9,000 uh, structural variants were found in this cost set. And they mainly consist of uh, deletions and insertions. Each of them have around 4,000 in the genome. In addition, there are a couple hundred duplications, CMVs, inversions, and complex SVs. Again, we checked the count of SVs per genome, and we found that they are as expected, there are more structural variants in the African population than others. In the, in the, we also examined the de novo rate in this cost set uh, using the 602 trails, where we find, which we find at 1.8%. Uh, I want to uh, point it out that the de novo, uh, because other studies has estimated a less than one de, uh, de novo SVs carried by each sample uh, or each individual. So any de novo SV, SVs we find in this data are expected to be either a false positive in the children's genome or a false negative in the parents' genome. So I guess the 1.8% might be a little bit overestimate, but should be super close to the real underlying false discovery rate. We also we compared the structural variance call set from this high coverage data to the southern genome, uh, southern genome phase ray low coverage data using the twenty five hundred shared samples, where we found two times more SV sites in the new in the in the high coverage call set than the southern than the phase ray call set. In addition, the significant increase in sensitivity were also reflected in the count of SVs per sample. So if we break down the sensitivity comparison by variant types, we, we found that the most significant increase in the sensitivity were reflected in the small SVs that are under 250 basis. In the last we compared, we annotated the structural variance uh, to, for potential functional consequences they have using the same method that were developed in the NOMAD SV study, where we define the loss of function mutations as structural variance that interrupt part of the operating frames or a complete depletion of the operating frames. Sorry, and we define copy gain as the uh, the duplication of the complete genes. Also, we define the uh, intragenic axon duplications or IED as the duplication of couple intact uh, axons. <laughs> 
uh, we uh, after after we have this annotation, we calculated the number of genes in each genome that are altered by each types of structural variants, where we find uh, about 120 uh, genes that were altered by the LOF mutations, uh, LOF, muta uh, LOF SVs in the high coverage call set, which is very close to the NOMAD estimations. And also for CG and IED, the number is quite close to NOMAD. But if we compare versus the phase three data, we actually saw a significant increase in the number of genes that are altered by SVs. We also broke down the count of loss of function mutations and other types of mutations. Uh, sorry, I, we break down the genes that are altered by each type of structural variants by their superpopulation. And we saw that the African population actually finds more, uh, have more genes that are altered by SVs than the other populations. Um, with that, I'm gonna take questions, sorry. With that, I'm gonna take questions about this section if there is any. Thank you so much. I actually had a question. Um, it seems like the insights um, from uh, structural variant distribution across the genome could be very uh, beneficial to interpretation of even smaller variants like missense um, uh, variants in particular, which have been very hard to estimate the impact of. Um, have you thought of ways to extend um, these statistics that you have to interpretation of other variants? Mm, I think so if you were talking about small SMVs and indels, I think that it's partially covered by the uh, NOMA studies in last May. Um, but to be honest, I'm not an expert in the small variants, but I believe there are there should be ways to do the, to do the same thing. And I think there are already mature uh, methods and statistics for this topic. Sounds great, thank you. Looks, looks like we'll have enough time for discussions in the end. So I'll keep going to the last ses session of my presentation, uh, which is the data that I personally am quite in excited about, which is the long read sequences. So as I mentioned before, the Human Genome Structural Variation Consortium has been dedicated to generate a long read of whole genome sequences from uh, subsets of the Southern Genome Samples. In the Chison et al. paper that were published two years ago, we selected three trails from the Southern Genome Samples and we sequenced them with multiple different technologies, including PacBio long reads, Illumina short reads, BioNano, and a couple other, other technologies like 10X or hi -C. Uh, we sequenced them to really high depth that the PacBio long reads were applied to the parents at uh, about 20X, but uh, applied to the children for 40x. We sequenced the, the Illumina sequence, we, we applied the Illumina whole genome sequences to an average of 75x. You, using this data, we were able to construct a haplotype specific uh, whole genome assemblies from the PacBio data, and uh, we detected the structural variance through direct comparison of uh, the assemblies versus the reference genome. And we harvested uh, an average of 24,825 SVs per genome from the long read assemblies. To detect the SVs from the short reads, we, we applied 13 different algorithms uh, to maximize the sensitivity from short reads. And we integrated them to form an ensembled call set that in compact, and in the final call set, we reported around 10 to 11 southern SVs per genome. In a more recent study that were published this February, by, led by Dr. Ebert et al., this, uh, the, we further extended the samples from none to 35 of the southern genome samples. And we sequence them with uh, high coverage pike bio long read whole genome sequences. We de similarly, we detected the genomic variation from the haplotype resolved assembly of the pike bio reads. And uh, from all those samples, we detected uh, about 
uh, about 15.8 uh, million SMVs, over 2 million in-depth, and more than 100,000 uh, uh, deletion insertions from across the 35 samples. So because all the 30, uh, sorry, because 34 uh, out of the 35 samples were included as part of the Southern Genomes study, the high coverage study that I just described before. So uh, we were, we actually have, have the structural variance call set on the same samples from both long read whole genome sequences and short read whole genome sequences. So this data actually allows for a direct comparison of SV discovery uh, by different technologies. Uh, so we analyzed the SVs detected by different technology. We started with the nine samples that were reported by Chison et al., where after we compare the overlap of SVs in the same genome, we found a strikingly low overlap between them that uh, only two thirds of the short read SVs and were overlapped by the long reads, and uh, over one third of the long read SVs were overlapped by the short reads. We analyzed the structural variation detected by different technologies uh, using the data reported by Chison et al. So for the same genomes, we found a strikingly low overlap between different technologies. And we wanted to explore why, like what caused the difference of SVs in the same genome only because they were detected by different technologies. So when we further examine the SV, the, the variance call set, the first thing we notice we notice is that the structural variants are unevenly distributed across the genome, that the highly repetitive segmental duplications and the simple repeated sequences consist uh, accumulatively less than 10% of the genome. However, nearly half of the short read structure variance and over 70% of the long read structure variance fell within this regions. In addition, if we check the concordance of SVs between short reads and long reads, we find uh, uh, and this similar pattern that the concordance is also affected by the genomic content that uh, much higher concordance were observed between uh, SVs detect by different technology in the relatively low repetitive unique and repetitive uh, relatively low repetitive region that are outside of the segmental dupes and the sample repeats. While if you check the highly repetitive regions here, the concordance are much lower for both solutions insertions. Let me make this clear that uh, uh, because as I talked, to, as I mentioned before, the Chison data were maximized for sensitivity. So, so we, as, we, as we anticipate, sorry, we estimate the false discovery rate in this call set might be a little bit higher uh, and this is also confirmed by the fact that uh, an average of uh, almost 700 de novo SVs were observed in each genome in this data, while in reality, uh, actually less than one de novo SVs were expected in each genome. So our next question were that would the false discover, would the false positive cause in this cause set affect, affect uh, uh, or driven the difference between the technologies, which turned out, yes, that is the case. Uh, so we actually developed a very stringent filtering methods to further clean up the data. And after that, we rerun the comparison for the concordance between technologies, where uh, after the tap one errors being removed, we found that the deletions in the low repetitive unique and the repeat mask sequences are actually of really high concordance between technologies that uh, over 93% of the SVs that were detected by each technology were overlapped by the other. However, that, that is only the case for deletions because for insertions, uh, 
the Takabao Lowry still shows much, much significantly increased sensitivity than the short reads. And uh, if we look into the highly repetitive segmental duplicates and simple repeat regions, we find uh, that it, the concordance are much lower between the two technologies. But uh, similarly, the long read showed, showed a much higher sensitivity in SV discovery in this region than the short reads. Short reads. So we later examined the concordance of SVs from different technology using the 35 samples that were reported in Ebert et al., the more recent GSVC study, where we find a potential blind spot of long read whole genome sequences in detecting large CNVs. So those, so among the Overlapping samples, we found an average of 170 multi uh, CMVs, including deletion, duplication, multi CMVs that were detected by short read sequencing depth based methods. Those are structural variance methods that purely de de define the, uh, cover the sequencing depth to look for CMVs. However, we found less than 12% of the CMVs were overlapped by long read SVs. To ensure the quality of those large CMVs, we manually inspected uh, the their we manually inspected their quality by plotting the distribution of their sequencing depths. As I showed in the plot on the right, where um, in the plot, the x-axis represents the locations on the genome, and the y-axis represents the normalized uh, sequencing depths of each sample. Each line represents a, a, a sample. So for example, in this plot, the right line represents a sample that were reported for a 26 KB deletions. And uh, this sample indeed showed the uh, uh, show the significant uh, decrease in the depth. And similarly for the blue line that represents a sample that is carrying a 15 KB duplications. We also examined the multi CMVs where we observed a clear separation of different copy states of, among the population. So through manual inspection, we were able to confirm that these large CMVs were of high quality and uh, they were uh, variants that were really, uh, that were potentially missed by long reads. And this is somewhere the long read, future long read master development could consider looking into. So that is uh, most of sorry that is most of the comparisons we have done for uh, long read long read versus short read technologies. And I will pause here for uh, for any questions. From your perspective, mm -hmm. if you wanted to improve um, structural variant calling the most, would you um, do you think having more samples uh, at low coverage? Um, or, or sorry, more cover, more samples at short reads versus um, the same kind of cost spending for long read sequences would lead to the best improvement in calls. Oh, thank you. I think that's a great question. So uh, I think a couple of aspects to this question. The first, as we showed, uh, let me go back actually, as we showed here, so even in the low repetitive genomic regions, you could see the still there are almost a half of the pack bio insertions that were not captured by the short read data. So that, indi that indicates uh, maybe like pack bio is better if you're looking for insertions. However, in our study, we actually found that for more than 95% of the, as the insertions that fell within the repetitive regions that were missed by Illumina short reads, we found that 90 over 95% of them have some alignment signatures from the short read. That said, if we keep working on uh, the insertion discovery methods on short reads, we, pre we pretty much are expected to cover most of the, uh, the insertions in this region. That's my hope. 
Uh, well, well, of course, long read showed much higher sensitivity in repetitive regions, but I want to remind us that from this plot, we could see that the highly repetitive regions, even though they harbor most of the structural variants, they only consist less than 10% of the genome. And if we count the coding regions in the especially the constraint or OMIM genes, this region only covers less than 5%. 5% of them. So actually, I would expect the specific gain in the uh, specific gain of power in SV discovery by long reads to be incremental in the uh, in over 90% of the low repetitive genomic regions. However, if you are interested in a highly repetitive in a genomic variants that are in the highly repetitive segmental duplicates or simple repeat regions, I think long read might be the way to go. Uh, so, but it, uh, I think it, based on the cost, um, it, it really depends on what your purpose is in selection, in selecting the correct sequencing technologies. So as a brief summarization, uh, the Southern Genomes Project, since its launch back in 2008, has been collecting samples from diverse populations across the world. In the latest study, we were able to collect, collect a, the a whole genome sequences from more than 3,200 samples. And uh, we detected more than 100 million SMVs, more than 14 million indels, and more than 170,000 SVs from these samples. I want to emphasize that these samples were relatively evenly distributed, uh, sampled from 26 populations. Uh, so they could, they are well, they're, they are a good representative for uh, the global. Uh, the populations around this work. And uh, all the data, the sequences and the call sets from our study and uh, are publicly available through either Anview or the Southern Genome FTP site. Uh, in terms of SV detection uh, by the high versus low coverage whole genome sequences, we observed uh, significantly increased sensitivity in variant discovery in both the overall variant count and the average variant count per sample, that we find 7% more SMVs, 59% more indels, and more than two, tem two times more SVs per genome in the high coverage data than the low coverage phase rate. In addition, we found that more genes are altered by structural variants in the high coverage cause set than the Southern Genome Phase Array. The last summarization I want to do on the long read versus short read comparison were that uh, uh, comparable sensitivity was observed in the discovery of deletions in low repetitive genomic regions, which indicates that uh, improved sensitivity from long read to detect pathogenic deletions is likely incremental. However, the highly repetitive genomic regions that are, which are segmental duplications and simple tandem repeats are traditionally inaccessible for short read whole genome sequences. So it is anticipated that new disease associated genes and sequences will emerge from this existing blind spot in the human genome with long read sequences and the maturing telomere to telomere assembly methods. Meanwhile, we should notice that there are still plenty of rooms for method development, for example, the the insertion discovery method for short reads and the large CMV uh, detection method for the long reads. So there are there's a long way to go. In the end, I'd like to thank my lab, our collaborators in the Tchaikovsky lab and the Broad SV team, as well as the Southern Genomes and the AGSVC group. Um, and uh, that is the all of my presentation for today.